Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about sensors in our pumps. Um, I've had a couple of questions of what reading should I get for what sensors in the pump. So I thought we'd just go over it a little bit, explain to what, what we have in them, and what readings you should be getting. So basically we have three different sensors, but in multiple different configurations. The first one we'll talk about is a thermal. The thermal is a small two-wire that's actually embedded inside a phase of the motor. So there's three that would be in a three-phase motor, one in each one of the phases, in series coming out with two wires. The, what we're looking for when we take a reading across those two wires that are coming out on an ohm meter would be a closed circuit. Okay, so somewhere around an ohm, two ohms, I'm not really concerned about what that resistance is. I just need to have resistance through there to know that I have a complete circuit through. When I overheat a motor, this thermal trips or opens up almost like points. And once that opens up, I get an alarm at the control panel. And in most cases, it'll shut the pump down on thermals. All right. If we didn't have a catastrophic failure, and burn the motor, causing the thermals to open. When this motor cools down, the thermals will close and you can restart the, the motor. I caution you not just to wait till it cools down and restart it. If it tripped, something caused it to trip. Whether we have a clog in there and it's in a locked rotor, something's happened to cause that. Okay, did we lose a phase? What's going on to create that extra heat there? So we would want to check that instead of just keep hitting the switch to restart it once it cools down. So that's our thermal, that's protecting our motor itself and the temperature in the motor. The next one that we'll talk about is called a PT100. Okay, now the PT100 can come in a couple of different forms. You see, we use one that's threaded, okay, and it works on temperature. You can also get one without threads that's usually epoxied in. And it's usually located in a submersible pump down at the lower bearing in that bearing housing, taking the temperature of the bearing, that lower bearing. And it works on resistance, as I said. So you take an ohm meter, and I'm looking normally when I'm in an ambient temperature that we have at the place, it would give me somewhere around 108 ohms, okay? So we can look across the two wires, and I'm at 108.4. And then you can go to the chart and convert ohms into Fahrenheit or Celsius. Okay, so again, that's the PT100, usually used and mostly used for us as a lower bearing temperature. The other sensor we use is leakage. And that's moisture getting into either the oil or the motor chamber. We have three different types. We have an external, usually on our smaller pumps. It's a, it's a two probe external where you would plug this into the pump and this would, wire would run to the external of the pump. We have one that has what we call one probe up, one probe down. The probe down would be going into the oil chamber, checking water or moisture into the oil. The up would go into the dry chamber of the motor, see, making sure we didn't get any moisture into the motor itself. And the third one, which is found on our FM products, would be two probes down, and that is only monitoring the water in the oil. Okay. On all of these, I'm looking for the same reading, okay? And I'm looking for an open reading. So if I was to take my ohm meter again, if you look into the plug, you have two connection points. If I put my meter across there, I should get nothing on my ohm meter. It should test as an open. Once I get moisture across these two probes, I'm making a connection there which will give me a reading up here and an alarm at my control panel that's on your two probe all right 
on my one probe up, one probe down. I'm not looking for resistance between these two probes, but I'm looking for an open between my probe and ground. So I would test each one, okay, and put it to the housing to make sure I had nothing on each one. What happens with this is when moisture comes in and it hits the probe, the, the body here is grounded. So as soon as it makes connection to ground, it's going to read an alarm coming up, okay? And the same with the bottom. Once I make a connection to ground, I'll get the alarm on that wire. But the initial reading should always be open, and I have failure in making my connections to ground, I get my alarm. The same with my external two probe was just like my internal two probe is what I'm looking for. As soon as moisture comes across those two, I'm making my connection, I'm sending it up my wire and making my alarm. So that's what I'm looking for on my three. So that's the sensors that we're putting in our units and hopefully that'll help you. Again, always remember to ask by serial number and model number, what motor do I have and what's the wire diagram for that motor? And it's going to tell you which one of these sensors you have in there and what you're looking to monitor.